globe is a three dimensional image a 3d model of the earth in a miniature that means in smaller things we are representing the total earth so this is a true representation of the earth so this globe is more accurate than the maps what we represent and this globe also gives us the correct size shape of different continents as well as the different countries globes are of different sizes as well as the types so what are the uses of globe globe is used to locate places globe are used to plan long distance travels via sea via air so planning this travel is known as great circle routes so this a route and c route can be planned using this globe and when we are planning through globe it is known as great circle route so this is an image how a globe looks now let's see how we can refer how we can understand a globe so there are points of reference on a globe so globe spins on an imaginary axis an imaginary line we have earlier also studied that earth spins earth rotates around itself right so earth spins around an imaginary line known as the axis and this axis has two ends those two ends are known as north pole and south pole and this axis line it is not always straight it is always tilted and this is at an angle of 23 and half degrees tilted towards the vertical and another imaginary line which runs through the middle of the earth this is known as equator and this equator divides the earth into two equal halves those are known as the southern hemisphere and the northern hemisphere and how can an absolute location of a place can be known using the globe it can be located using a coordinated recognized system formed by latitudes and longitudes so these are the points in a globe where the middle half is known as the equator and there are points known as latitudes and longitudes and there are two poles north pole and south pole these are the points on a globe latitudes let's learn about latitudes these lines of the latitudes are imaginary lines that run across horizontally across the surface of the earth horizontal lines which run on the surface of the earth are known as the latitudes they measure the angular distances in degrees minutes and seconds or they also measure a point on the north or south of the equator equator is located at 0 degrees latitude and equator divides the earth into two equal halves known as the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere all the lines which are parallel to the north of the equator they are known as the northern latitudes and all the lines which are parallel to the south of the equator they are known as the southern latitudes so this is the imaginary horizontal lines running on a globe known as the latitudes now let's see the characteristics of these parallel lines so the latitudes run parallel to the equator in a east to west direction so these lines always run from east to the west direction and they are always equidistant from each other that means they are at a equal distance from each other and equator line is the longest parallel line and these parallel lines decrease in length from the equator to the poles so while going from equator to the poles they decrease in length the 90 degrees north and south latitudes are known as north pole and the south pole and these latitude lines they are numbered upwards and downwards from the equator so see if they start at 0 degrees they end up to 90 degrees at the poles and this north pole and south pole are indicated using a letter capital n and capital s so totally there are 181 degrees of latitude on the whole minus that is 90 degrees in the northern hemisphere and 90 degrees in the southern hemisphere and the equator so 90 plus 90 makes 180 plus one line is the equator that makes totally 181 degrees of the latitude so in this image you see this 0 degrees is the equator then comes northern pole here north and this is the southern pole so here it is decreasing so here from 0 to 90 it is increasing and here also from 0 to 90 it is increasing so this is known as northern latitude this is the southern latitude and these are the lines of latitudes next let's learn about the important parallels what are the important parallel lines the 0 degrees latitude or equator is one important parallel line then next 
23 degrees north from the equator we have tropic of cancer and 23 and half degrees south from the equator we have tropic of capricorn and 60 double of this 66 and half degrees north from the equator we have arctic circle and 66 and half degrees south from the equator we have antarctic circle these are the important parallels of the globe so in this image students you see the important latitudes equator Tropic of Cancer top, and Arctic Circle on the north, Tropic of Capricorn and Antarctic Circle on the south. These parallels, how do they help us? They differentiate the temperatures, temperature zones of the earth. So each hemisphere of the earth, the northern hemisphere as well as the southern hemisphere, it is divided into three temperature zones. These three temperature zones are torrid zone, temperature zone and frigid zone. Now we will learn in detail about these three zones. So, first zone is the torrid zone. So, in the parallel lines called latitudes between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, the midday sun shines perpendicularly over the head at least once in a year. So, between Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn, the sun shines perpendicularly over our head only once in a year. And these latitudes get directly the rays of the sun. So, these latitudes are known as the hottest zone. So, this is known as the torrid zone or the tropical zone. So, this is the torrid zone which is at the equator, right? So, the latitudes or parallel lines which lie between the Tropic of Cancer and Arctic, and Arctic Circle in the north and Tropic of Cancer and Ar Antarctic Circle in the southern hemisphere, they get the inclined rays of the sun. So, directly they do not get sun rays. They get the inclined rays of the sun. So, these Regions which receive the inclined rays of the sun are known as the temperate zones. So, this is the north temperate zone and this is the south temperate zone. And the middle is the heavy summer region that is the torrid zone. Next, moving on to the frigid zone. So, the latitudes between Arctic Circle and the North Pole in the Northern Hemisphere and Antarctic Circle and South Pole in the Southern Hemisphere, they get the least amount of sun rays. So, that is the reason these are very cold regions and these are known as the frigid zones or the polar regions. So, polar zone or frigid zone is here in the southern hemisphere. Next, let's study about the longitudes. So, longitudes are the vertical lines which pass on the globe. The vertical lines which pass on the globe are known as the meridians of the longitudes. And they run from the north pole to the south pole, cutting the parallel lines of the latitudes. So, latitudes are the horizontal lines and longitudes are the vertical lines. And all the longitudes are of same length and they are also measured in degrees. And there are two important meridians known as the prime meridian and the international date line. So, this is the image of longitude. These are all the vertical lines which are known as the longitudes and these are also indicated in degrees. Next, let's see the characteristic of these longitudes or meridians. So, these lines of longitude always run from a north and north to south direction from the north pole to the south pole. And this distance between the meridians decreases. This distance between the meridian decreases from the equator. And these meridians are numbered from the prime meridian. So, they are known as 360 degrees of longitude. Next, let's see what is earth grid. The lines of latitudes and longitudes definitely meet at one point, right? The point where they insert or the point where they meet is at right angle, that is 90 degrees. So, this 90 degrees forms like a rectangular shaped angle, right? So, that grid which forms by this crisscrossing lining is known as the earth grid. And this earth grid only helps us to locate places easily. So, in this image, we see the earth grid. At every latitude and longitude meet at right angles forming a rectangular shaped angle. Next let's see the different time zones of the world. So they are worldwide time zones. The first person to discover was Sir Sanford Fleming. He discovered the worldwide time zones in 1878. He told that the world would be divided into 24 time zones and each one would be separated by 15 degrees of longitudes. Next, let's see what is standard time. The local time of a place that depends on a meridian of a longitude that passes through it. So, what longitude, what degrees it is passing through that place? determines the time of the place. But there are several longitudes passing through India. Then what? 
then there is a standard time for each country which is taken as the time of central meridian of that country so every country has a standard time and all the countries follow a standard time so the local time of that central meridian of india is 82.3 degrees east and this is the standard time for the entire country which is known as the indian standard time which we follow and there is also greenwich mean time gmt this is the local time at greenwich and this can be used for calculating the time globally so all the countries add few hours to this greenwich mean time and follow their standard times next let's study about the international day line so opposite to prime meridian is exactly 180 degrees longitude this 180 degrees longitude is treated this 180 degrees longitude is treated as the international date line so the prime meridian and this international date line together divide the earth into two halves that is western hemisphere and eastern hemisphere and they lie at 360 degrees longitudes around the globe so longitudes that lie to the left of 0 degrees prime meridian up, up to 180 degrees longitude they are denoted by letter w that is western hemisphere longitudes while those longitudes that that lie towards the right side of the prime meridian up to 180 degrees they are denoted by letter e is to the eastern hemisphere so all together they are 180 on the east and 180 on the west which makes the 360 degrees longitudes and this international date line separates into two calendar days so countries which lie in the eastern hemisphere they are one day ahead of countries those lie in the western hemisphere so that is the reason india is little bit ahead the american countries in terms of the time and day so this is the international date line